as a candidate, are you going to be able to tell the teachers union that maybe, although they deserve a pension, but maybe their pension is a little bit too generous, especially when you compare that to the private sector? You know, I think people make the comparison to the private sector a lot of the time. And this is something I've actually spent a lot of time looking at over my, my time in Springfield and, and now. And the average teacher's pension, although there are some that are outsized, particularly for some administrators, get some very large and inappropriately large, in my view, pensions. But I think the average teacher pension is really more like 30 in the mid thirty thousand, in terms of what teacher retirees are currently getting. Well, it's seventy. If they're there for the thirty years, they get seventy, seventy-five percent. But when you look at what you know, if you were to look at the average, the state, I looked at it a couple weeks ago, and I unfortunately don't have the name, the number at the top of my mind, but it's in the mid thirties in terms of what the average benefit is. And I think you also have to step back and realize that. So, my friend Becky, who became a teacher um, up in um, in uh, Round Lake. When she, when I graduated, she went and became a teacher, and she received a significantly lower salary than people did who went to work in the private sector. And um, she paid more into her retirement than other people who are in the private sector paid into their retirement. I think when you put it all together, it's something like 10 percent of the salary when you put all the the sources going in. You know, many young people her age who go to the private sector don't don't put anything in. And so the trade-off that we make these teachers, you make, you give us more of your salary to pay for your pension, you, w you stay in one place unlike the private sector where, you know, I, it's quite frequent that people move between jobs, you stay, you know, employed in this line of work and you make your pension contributions and we're going to support you. So I, I wish that, I, th I think define the, the other thing, actually, is that defined contribution plans are cheaper to administer. The, the, dip, the problem is that you transfer the risk from the individual to the employer. Right? The employer has the risk if they fail to pay their fair share. But as an individual basis, it's cheaper to provide a benefit as a defined contribution because you don't have the bookkeeping expenses, you don't have the individual management expenses, you don't have, you're not paying the, you pay lower consulting fees. So I, I support uh, providing them those benefits. Hopeful. I, I worked on a reauthorization of the teachers' re retirement insurance program, um, and we sat down with the teachers' unions, and we sat down with representatives of school districts, and we sat down with everybody, and we came to a negotiated agreement to extend the benefit, the retirement health insurance benefit, and uh, teachers paid a little bit more, school districts paid a little more, the state paid a little bit, a lot more, you know, a lot more at that time. There were some benefits changes, so I, I'm. I support coming to the table and saying, okay, what can we do to address this? But stepping back, uh, providing a defined benefit, uh, if you pay as you go, now we haven't paid as we've gone. You know, we owe teachers, retired teachers, billions of dollars into the pensions. But if you pay as you go, it's cheaper than doing a defined contribution plan because you don't have those administrative costs but you have to meet your obligations in order for that to work. So, you know, I, I'm committed to, to making benefits that make sense. You know, there's also, but, and I'm committed to working with the teachers unions and I've worked with them on a lot of issues uh, across the table, next to them, you know, in different roles. But I think the fundamental premise is that I, I believe that a defined, I think if, if this last economic downturn has taught us something, it should be, that we don't want everybody's livelihood tied to the ups and downs of the market. And we benefit as an economy if there's a group of people, particularly our retirees, who have a stable income stream. You know, this whole pension thing is a rather difficult question. I think that um, it, people work hard, and, and I think that people deserve a pension. Um, what that amount should be, is 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 up for 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 question for you know it's up for debate um, age at retirement and the age that people can actually start collecting that money I think also is something that we should look at are you mm -hmm. going to be willing to say to the teachers mm -hmm. you know 
the, the taxpayer should pay you a fair amount. Mm -hmm. And you may have to wait a little longer. Maybe instead of age 52, life expectancies are longer. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're going to have to wait till age 62 to mm -hmm. retire. Mm -hmm. You think that's a fair thing to say to the teachers? I think that we have to look at things like that. I think that the age, the age limit is something that, um, that has to be looked at. So, so you would uh, potentially support increasing the retirement age for teachers? I mean, I would have to look at it in terms of a whole package. I mean, I, you know, I think that unfunded mandates from the state are difficult for cities, and I don't think that, um, that I think we need to change that. Yeah, but the teachers work so hard in the, to get the legislators elected. What are the legislators going to do? <laughs> I mean, isn't that, what, isn't that what it's about in Springfield, that whoever works for the candidates ends up getting something? Well, um, I think that happens everywhere in life, I'm learning. It's not yeah, just yeah, in right. government. I mean, right. that but happens everywhere. So, so, then we, so, then, so then the people paying income tax and, and uh, sales tax, mm -hmm. uh, the people who have to buy a, buy a coat, they see their mm -hmm. sales tax go up to 10% mm -hmm. because the legislature's just doing things for people who help get them elected. I'm, I'm and, and you were a politician, and yeah. you were a pretty good one. And as you know, the political systems tend to reward political effectiveness. And the teachers have done a great job of um, banding together and uh, making their case uh, as a union. And people tend to like teachers uh, for, for good reason, I think. And uh, a lot of teachers, a lot of people don't realize the hours that they, that they actually put in, you know, grading the tests, getting prepared for a lesson plan, uh, and then you're on for hours a day. It's like uh, they're actually on stage more than your average trial lawyer, okay? And 65000 a year for life, on the one hand, it sounds great. It's more than you, more than I'm going to make uh, in Social Security. It's more than I'm going to get from, uh, you know, whatever I've been able to, to put away probably. But it's not an AIG type of, uh, uh, of windfall either. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a nice sum, and it wasn't as much of a problem when people didn't live so long. Remember, part of the it's not a problem; it's a, it's a blessing, right? We all celebrate when our, uh, our 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 parents and our grandparents lived to 90 or 100, but it's uh, caused huge difficulties for any uh, actuarial system. So, are we going to do anything about it? I think we have to. I think uh, that it's impossible to close the gap that we're facing. We had a $9 billion to $11 billion uh, deficit uh, this year. How can you make up a $74 billion uh, hole if you're taking in less than you're, than you're spending? Okay? There, you, you have to increase revenue somehow. Uh, whether it's from your own state or from outside of the state, and there's a lot of eyes looking to, to Washington on that, although ultimately that's our own money as well. Um, you probably also have to cut expenses, and then you have to find a way. Uh, everything has to be on, on the table, and what you're talking about is a two-tier two system. Will newer teachers, newer state employees coming to the system have the same type of pension plan as we've had in the past? Well, the 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 pension plans that, that we have are the same kind of model, um, the post-World War II model that uh, the, uh, the auto industry was using. And you know, it, that hasn't worked out real well for them. Uh, so I think we have to look at, at, at something different. So you're open to pension reform? I, I'm more than open to pension reform. I, I think that pension reform is going to be an inevitable. It's not that I'm out there beating the drum for it. I mean, I'd like everybody to be able to be as comfortable as possible. I'd like teachers and public employees to be well rewarded. I'd like you to be able to retire on the farm too, Art, but... Uh, I'm still looking for that farm. You know, we, 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 we can't all have the Big Rock Candy Mountain. Uh, uh,